In 2012, dairy farmers Gavin and Susan Wheel downsized their farm and designed and built a new robotic dairy for their all-grass farming system. The idea was to create a semi-automated regime to give them the more flexible farm lifestyle that they couldn't achieve with a twice-a-day milking routine. We've got about 65 effective hectares and we're milking 180 cows, grow all our own maize and supplements. It was my father's farm before I bought it. I've been here for 56 years. As a family, we decided we might downsize a bit. The top end of the farm we sold off, and that's where the cow shed was. So we decided we'd downsize a bit and try and enjoy life a bit more. When we went into it, it was a bit of the unknown, whether it would work on a grass-based system. There were a few knockers, but you don't know until you try. So we gave it a go, and it's been very successful. When we first started training the cows, you have the odd teething problem, but Laylee are very good. They looked after us, and they were here to help us. But now it just flows. First year, we increased production by 70 milk solids a cow. Saying that we kept our older cows too because when we downsized we sold all the good young cows so I was very happy with that. The lifestyle's different. You've still got to be on the farm setting it up for the cows but you can do it in your own time. There's no, no sort of, you're not structured on times that you've got to be there to milk and, and if anything goes wrong we just get a phone call from the robot and it'll just shut down. I'm very impressed with the system. I'd recommend it to anyone. I've got no problems with it at all. You don't need the numbers for staffing. The only thing is that someone sort of has to be in contact with it. If the phone goes, well, you don't have to rush into it, but you've got to go and sort it out sometime. And because the worst that'll happen is that one robot will shut down and the other two will keep going. The more cows you have, the more robots you need. About one robot per 80 cows is what you'd want to work on. There's an entrance on each side depending what race they're coming down from. And they enter here, they've got access to the three robots. Once it's free they go on the robot. It will wash their udders, put the cups on, milk them, and then they go out and the drafting gate will send them whichever direction we want them to. They're free to come whenever they want to. We're averaging about 2.4 milkings in 24 hours. It takes about five days on average to train a cow. After five days you don't really see her again. And they're fed on production. The more milk they give, the more meal they'll get. Uh, because of the payout, we've actually dropped the meal right down. But we still give them a little bit to keep them flowing. We're down the back in the centre of the farm. We're surrounded by the Waipa and the Poonia River. We grow five and a half hectares of maize and then we end up with a couple of hundred bales at least of silage every year just by what the cows can't eat. For the system to work you've got to have a three ray system from the point of the robot and every eight hours the cows will go down a different race and the only way they can get down a different race is by going through the robot. Our gate times are 12 o'clock, they go up one race and then 8 o'clock at night and then 4 o'clock next morning. So they, they work around those times but they know what's going on and they know the system then. We've had to cut all our paddocks in half so all our paddocks are 0.8 of a hectare. So that's eight hours grazing they have in that 0.8 of a hectare. Normally the grass lasts for eight hours in that paddock. They've learned the system that when they move on they get a new break. So that entices them to go back to the shed and be milked as well. The cows run the system. We don't run it, the cows run it. So when the cows want to come, they come and, and you might be halfway through a job but you've just got to let the cow do what the cow wants to do. With the collars the cows wear in the necks, when they come in to be milked, it tells us how much milk they give every milking, 
protein, fat and lactose, conductivity. The information that you can get is quite amazing. Like it picks all our bullying cows out for us. If we want to draft a cow out, either the AB cows will draft out automatically when we've set it into the computer. Um, or else if we just want to draft a cow out, we just enter that n number and tell it we want that cow drafted out and it'll be drafted out next time it comes through. Animal health has been a huge thing for us. We've noticed the animal health is a lot better, the cows are really relaxed, we have a lot less lameness and overall just the general health of the animal is better. So less stress on cows, less stress on staff, they're happy in their environment uh, and they're sort of doing what they want to do. Well it's really nice not having to get out of bed at five o'clock every morning. Um, the odd occasion Gavin's had to get out in the middle of the night to come to the robot but um, it's, it's different. Um, people think you can just pack your bags and go away for a week but there's livestock involved so that's never going to happen. Um, but um, it's just that freedom of not being committed to being somewhere at a particular hour of the day every day. Um, so we enjoy that and um, it's, it's a real family thing for, for us. Our three children are, have always loved the farm and are all involved in the dairy industry in different ways so um, they all have an impact and, a, and an input and so it's been quite nice for them to, to experience the same as what we have. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.